Keeping your devices updated at the edge is very important for your solutions. But implementing a resilient over-the-air update solution is not always easy. Alex and Saravanan from the Azure Devices and Platform team are here to show us using an Azure Percept Dev Kit, how it's done. This is today on the IoT Show. Hi everyone, this is the IoT Show. I'm Olivier, your host. Thanks for watching. Today, with Alex and Saravanan, we'll look at a demo of a resilient over-the-air update solution with the Azure Percept Dev Kit. Alex, Saravanan, thanks for joining us today. How are you? Good. Thanks, Olivier. Good. Thanks, Olivier. Thanks for hosting us. Always. Um, so let's go with you, Alex, first. Short introduction about yourself, your team, and what are you doing at Microsoft? Yeah, my name is Alex Ackerson, and I'm a PM on the Azure Edge and Platform team. Uh, and my role is building uh, the leading update story for our Edge AI and IoT ecosystem. Nice. How about you, Sarvanan? I'm Sarvanan Somasundaram. I'm a developer in the Azure Edge and Platform team. I own the design and architecture of the update stack for Azure Percept devices. Okay. So the Azure Percept device, we have a couple of videos about it. It's been announced at Ignite, um, and it's really about telling the story and showing the story of, of the intelligent edge, right, in a nutshell, right? With, with state-of-the-art hardware, but also state-of-the-art practices for security, for a bunch of things. And today we're gonna to focus on that over-the-air update um, that, uh, you know, we're gonna go through the architecture, we're gonna look at the demo. Uh, and so we'll start with you, Alex. Tell us a bit more about what we're gonna to see today and about this architecture for a, uh, for a resilience over-the-air update of devices. Definitely, Let, let's jump right into it. So uh, hearing from partners and customers, we learned that building a resilient and robust update story for Edge AI and IoT devices was really essential. So with Azure Percept Dev Kit, uh, we've integrated a lot of tools and services from Azure in building this leading over the air uh, update stack. So let's look at our update architecture for uh, the Azure Percept Dev Kit. So as you can see here, you can see the Azure Percept Dev Kit on the left, on the right, and Azure IoT Hub on the left. As you can see, there's three core components that we want to update. There's the firmware, the host OS, and the data partition with all the AI models. Let's talk about the AI models first. To update those, we use Azure IoT Edge. Azure IoT Edge allows us to deploy, monitor, and update those AI models, and those run all as standard containers in the data partition on the device. Next, there's the host OS and the firmware. And to update that, we use the device update for IoT Hub, which is a new service. Uh, both of these are updated together, and the SW update installer performs the update. It talks to the device update for IoT Hub, uh, which then interacts with the device twin uh, in Azure IoT Hub. What's interesting also to note is that the data partition is separate from the host OS and firmware, and this allows us to persist the AI models across an OS and firmware update. Nice. And the OS that we have on the Azure Percept Dev Kits is CBL Mariner, right? What, what happens when, when our partners and customers want to implement the same best practices of that resilient over the year update on other OSs? Exactly right. So our implementation is on CBL Mariner, but all of this, it can be extended to your specific device scenario and solution. So we want to provide that extensibility to all of our partners. Okay, so good to know that it's not locked down to what we're using here. This is really about showing the best practices. Talking about best practices, um, so implementing an update like that, uh, you know, on, on many devices, something that will require to have some backend, uh, you know, automation and, and, and infrastructure. So how, can you give us a glimpse or a sneak peek at how we are implementing that robust uh, over the update, uh, you know, for Azure Percept Dev Kits? Definitely. So like you said, infrastructure is essential to building a, a successful update strategy. And on our team, we use the power of Azure and all the tools available for you to create that great infrastructure. So let's first talk about Azure DevOps pipelines. 
uh, Azure DevOps pipelines allow you to continuously build, test, and deploy update artifacts. So we are using Azure DevOps pipelines to create those update images. We're also signing those update images, and we're also generating the import manifest. And this is the manifest that, that describes the update and, and what you're trying um, and how you're trying to update the devices. All of this use of Azure DevOps pipelines enables us to automate the build process. Uh, and next, another important thing is automated VM testing. Automated VM testing is so essential because it enables us to always test the updates. You know, um, an issue with an update can have big impacts to your end-to-end -end operation. So testing it frequently is very important. We have a Windows Server machine that has a base version of that Azure Percept uh, VM image. And what happens is that when we have a new update, we import the update and the manifest file. Then we schedule a deployment to the VM. The VM downloads and installs the update. And finally, it provides that feedback back on, on the status of that deployment. So all of this allows us to accelerate that critical update testing. So both of these implementations, all done through the, the tools on Azure, are so essential to, to help you create that great um, update infra. And that's interesting because with my um, you know years of experience engaging with customers uh, and seeing them implement their own solutions, these patterns, these practices you're showing here are the ones that the industry is adopting or is using already, uh, where, where uh, it seems making it you know, even simpler with all the bits and pieces that we provide. Um, so that's for the back end. How about the device side of things? Exactly. So the device side is another really important part that we decided to focus on. Um, if you look at IoT and edge AI devices, they're not like our laptops and smartphones where our user is behind the device as it's updating. So an issue with an update can really impact the device, uh, potentially break the device and cause that end-to-end -end operational impact. So we want to make sure that our updates um, don't cause that. And to do that, we're using uh, atomic image updates. Atomic image updates means that we target both the OS and the firmware. So instead of updating one specific component on the device, we update all the components on the device. And this atomicity minimizes the risk of an update breaking or impacting the device. So Alex, this certainly makes for a more resilient um, process here for updating the device. Anything else that we're doing on the device side of things to make it even more resilient? Exactly. Resiliency is so important. So another thing we're doing uh, is that we're doing a dual uh, partition image update. Um, this supports rollback functionality, which minimizes the risk of an update impacting the device in operation. Uh, rollback functionality means that if there's an issue with the update, the device has the ability to go back to its pre-update state. Nice. Easy. And actually, interestingly, this is also a very common pattern in the industry of, of IoT for updating devices. Okay, so now I'll turn to Saravanan because the title of the uh, episode here is Demo of a, a Resilient uh, Audio Update Process. So Saravanan, now let's look at you know, what it takes to do the update and do it in real life. Sure. Uh, so when we talk about update, there are three main steps in all the update flow. We import the update, deploy the update, and monitor the device to update to look for the progress of the update. During the import phase, the device builder would leverage the DevOps pipeline to create a few artifacts. There are two artifact groups that's of important. One is the import image payload and another is the update payload. The image payload is used to directly flash the image on the devices in the factory floor. The update payload is used to import the update content to device update for IoT Hub. We can either use the UX or the API to complete the import process. Now let's uh, get to the demo to look into the input process. So this is the device update for IoT Hub section in Azure uh, in IoT Hub uh, resource. We go to the in update section, import a new update. There are two artifacts of importance. One is the import manifest file. The next is the update payload itself, which is roughly around 275 meg. We use a storage account temporarily to host the update. The import process typically takes anywhere around five minutes to one hour, depending on the size of the update payload. 
So while this is going on, let's switch to the device side to see what are the uh, partition structure and things like that. So here is a device. So uh, Alex did mention about uh, AB updates and so. So mm -hmm. as we see here, this is the partition structure. We have AB partition for the boot file system. We have the AB partition for the root file system. As a fresh device, uh, what happens is uh, the root is mounted on the root file system A. When we update, the down the update payload is downloaded onto the var partition, which is a more persistent partition. And then the update is being flashed into the root file system and boot file system. And on the next boot, it will boot the root will be mounted onto the root file system B, which we'll see. And um, on the another service that's of importance is the AD, uh, the device update for IoT Hub service that's on the device. So this is uh, configured as an auto start service, and we see here it's configured with the connection strength. Okay, so let me ask you real quick, uh, Sravanan here. So you talked about the uh, the AB uh, mechanism here and the fact you need the, the daemon here uh, for um, the Azure Update Service. What about you know the the ensuring that this image is legit? What's going on on the device? You know, when it comes to getting the image and making sure that it's not a random thing that's been hacked in the, in the middle uh, from the server to the device itself. Definitely, that's a great question. So when we look into the import manifest, this is a plain JSON file. So there are important sections in this. So one is the manufacturer and model that helps to target a specific update to a specific class of devices. And then we have the file size and the hash information. So once we download the file, so uh, we will kind of check on the size of the file as well as the hash to ensure the file that's downloaded is uh, in fact the one that's targeted for the device. Okay. So the, this is one place we ensure integrity. Another place is in one, the SW file itself is a, basically a container and it contains multiple files within that. And one is the SW description manifest file. In the description manifest file, there are sections for the firmware, boot file system and root file system. And there are sections for uh, hash value for each and every payload inside as well. Okay, perfect. And makes it definitely more secure. Uh, and, and you want to check that the image is, is legit when it comes in. Okay, so where were you at? So you, you created a deployment. Did you start the deployment yet? I didn't see. No, we did. so we imported the update. So this is the state of the device in the device twin. Yep. So here, there are a couple of sections that's of importance. Here is where the uh, manufacturer and model information persists on the device twin. So right now, if you see the device twin, this device is part of a device group. So this is the tag that's used to categorize the device into a specific device group. So this is a part of the device group lab B. And now let's go ahead and schedule the uh, update for this particular device. The update that we imported takes time to be imported. Uh, so we will kind of take an up, already pre-imported update. Okay. So there's an update here. We will create a deployment. We'll target for the group lab D and we'll schedule the deployment to start right immediately. Let's just go to the deployment page and check the status of the deployment. So we have one device and uh, the deployment status in progress. Right. So and you, were saying the, you were saying earlier on the, the image is only 275 megs. That's what you say, right? Yes. So that includes the firmware, boot file system, and the root file system. Right, that's not a lot, and 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 I think you you mentioned that Alex is that the the file system is not affected, right? So you can have your previously uploaded models still there. Because these models actually could be gigabytes of data with the advanced machine learning models that we we push down there, right? Exactly yeah, right. Uh, so now that we started the deployment and the deployment is complete, so we have one device in progress. Let's refresh to check on the state of the service. So the deployment has succeeded. Uh, now let's check on the device side. So last time the root file system was mounted on partition root file system A. Now after the uh, update, it's now booted on root file system B. Okay. So here is a summary of the deployment phase. So the Azure Percept uh, device uh, did the initialization with the Azure IoT Hub uh, by having the twin state. And the operator started the deployment process, reaching to the device update for IoT Hub service. And did reach to IoT Hub sending the device twin state. The device ran the, I, the uh, device update IoT Hub agent that interpreted the change to the device twin state and downloaded the update payload, processed the payload, used the SW update installer to install it, and reported the status back onto the device twin. And the device update service interpreted the status and reported the status back onto the Azure portal.
Okay, and this is the way you've been implementing a nice resilient over the update. Uh, it's as we we're saying for the Azure Percept device, but not only. Actually, this is something that uh, can be done with other hardware. Uh, these are best practices uh, to implement this kind of uh, over the update. Alex, eventually, you want to drive us through the the, the key takeaways uh, that we just you know discussed today. Yeah, let's talk about those key takeaways. Uh, so. All of it that we discussed today is to help you as a builder and a developer really build that resilient over the air update solution. So first of all, use dual partition AV image updates to increase that resiliency of your updates. Also run the device update for IoT Hub Agent as an auto start service. Integrate with SW Update Installer. Then build with Azure DevOps Pipeline to really accelerate uh, that uh, to really accelerate that build process. Also sign the update payload for additional security. And finally, automate update testing so that you can ensure that your updates have been tested thoroughly before deploying them to your customers. And we're so excited to be here talking to you. And we're also excited now to announce that the Azure Percept Dev Kit is in public preview and you can see all of this update stack in action today. Well, nice recipe for uh, a clean way of updating your IoT uh, devices at the edge. Uh, if you want to learn more about this whole process, um, I think you guys put together a nice blog post um, that can be found at aka.ms slash IoT show slash update Azure Percept DK, like dev kit. Alex Saravanan, thanks a lot for, for your time, for your nice demo uh, and for that explanation today. Everyone, thanks for watching the IoT show. See you soon and have a great day.